Okay, so today we're going to be talking a little bit more about ratios and proportions. I know it's the topic you guys have seen before. Okay, I know it is. Okay. So let's define some of these words that we've been throwing around here, or that I was throwing around at least. Okay, so for example, the word ratio. Okay, a ratio is a uh, something that just compares uh, two measurements okay, or numbers. And in mathematics, we write them in three, mostly three different ways. Okay, one way you can see a ratio is you can see it's just a number A over a number B like that. So it looks very much like a fraction. In fact, you can kind of think of it as a fraction as a ratio, okay, and vice versa. Or sometimes you can see it kind of written in this way, A colon B like that. That's equivalent. These two things are equivalent. So if you see A colon B, it's the same thing as saying A over B mathematically. Okay, or one other way you can see a proportion, or sorry, a ratio written is you just see the word, you see the number A, the word 2, and then B like that, A to B. Okay, like that, and that'll give you enough information there. Okay? <laughs> Drive by shooting there. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> okay. So, those are your ratios. Now, you guys deal with ratios all the time in real life, right? Okay? For example, when you're driving down the road, or when you, when you will be driving down the road, okay, one thing you're going to keep an eye out for, right, is the speed limit sign. And a speed limit, all right, or a speed is a ratio because it's a number. And what are the units for, our, um, for a speed? Miles per hour, right? And so the idea is, for example, on... 70, I think they just upped the speed limit on 70 here in Frederick to 70 miles per hour, okay? So now people won't get confused with the interstate number and the, um, and the speed limit, okay? So, unfortunately, 270, I don't think they're going to increase to 270 miles per hour. That would just be too much for most people's cars. But anyway, 70 miles per one hour, okay? Shh. That's a ratio. That's a ratio, okay? You're comparing miles to hours here, so 70 miles every one hour, Okay? Another thing that's, that shows up on cars a lot, when you go to buy a car, for example, one of the ratios that you'll see sometimes on the window, okay, is miles per gallon, too, for the efficiency. Exactly right. So, so for example, you know, you might get, like, you might see, like, a 32 miles per gallon of gas. Of course, the better that number is, that means the further you go per tank of gas, so ideally the less money you'll be spending on uh, fuel and stuff like that, okay? So, again, per one gallon of gas or something like that typically is what you see. Typically, you just see the number 32, though, because it's over one. And typically, again, you don't see 70 over one. You just see 70 because, again, it's over one, so it's just really 70. But those are ratios. Those are ratios, okay? So, and now. What about one mile per gallon? Yeah, one mile per gallon, that's like probably most people's old trucks. You probably get one mile per gallon there, okay? Um, or like big ships, I know, get less than, less than a mile per gallon probably of fuel. <laughs> All right, an equation, so a proportion now, a proportion, you'll normally like hear those kind of alongside with ratios. A proportion is just an equation that says two ratios are equal. Okay, so again, a, a proportion is an equation of two ratios, equating two ratios. Okay, and so for example, if we see something like if A over B is equal to C over D, then what must be true if we use cross multiplication here? If A over B equals C over D, so we have two ratios, ratio A over B, ratio C over D, and they're, we're saying they're equal, what must be true then if we use cross-multiplication there? 
what times what equals what times what? Yes, A times D equals B times C, right? That's that cross multiplication rule there, okay? We multiply those two together, we multiply those two together, and they must be equal as well, okay? <coughs> All right. So let's see here. What? Let's see an example or two of these. Okay, and so our goal here is to solve for x. We'll do a couple examples here. Okay, so let's say we've got. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 4 over x okay. equals sixteen, okay, over um, sixty four. Okay, four over x equals sixteen over sixty four. Okay. And again, we want to find x. So to do that, uh, Antoinette, what should we do here to solve this equation, solve this proportion? What can we do? Okay, so 4 times 4 gives you 16. So then what can we do here to get what x has to be? 16 times 4, does that give us 64? It does, yeah. So x must be what then? 16. Must be 16. Must be 16. Okay. Okay, so, so think of it this way, maybe, Antoinette. Think of it this way. Instead of, instead of doing 4 times 4 equals 16, think about it this way. 16 divided by 4 gives us 4. So 64 divided by 4 would have to give us this number, which is 16. Okay, alternatively, yeah, Corey, you want to say? Divided by 64 divided by 4 and then divided by 16. Yeah, so... so if we cross multiply here, and Corey kind of like did it all in one step, which is fine, you can do that, no problem. Um, 4 times 64, what did you get for that? 256. 256, okay. Okay. 4 times 64 is 256. 16 times x is 16x. And so then he divided both sides by, or he divided by 16, and there he got the 16 as well that way. So, yep, two different ways to do that. Absolutely. Also, you can easily check your work here. Let me just show you real quick. It's super easy. 4 divided by 16. Like uh, Gabe was saying earlier, if you check the decimal, so there he got, well, we get 0.25, and if we do 16 divided by 64, look at that, same exact decimal. So Gabe, you know, checked earlier the first couple problems there by just dividing them and seeing if the decimals are the same, and that's legit too, okay? It works. All right, let's try another one. I'm going to change it up a little bit here. We'll say 4 over x plus 2 equals 16 over 5 plus x. Ooh, okay. Okay. So again, we have a proportion, right? A ratio equal to a ratio. Four over x plus two equals sixteen over five plus x. Okay. Now, we could try and do what Antoinette did earlier. Okay, the thinking there, where she sees that. Okay, well, what do we have to do with four to get sixteen? You know, we can multiply 4 by 4 to get 16, but then it's like, well, okay, but how do I multiply this by 4 to get that? Well, we could kind of set it up that way. Okay. Yep. Okay, so be careful here. We don't want to set these equal to each other. We can cross-multiply, though. So we can do x plus 2 times the 16, 5 plus x times the 4. Is that what you're going to say to do, Debbie? Yeah. yeah. Cross-multiply here. Now, I'm going to show you kind of this how this works. So when I do 4 times 5 plus x, let me actually write that out. Rather than doing the multiplication like we have been, let me write that out. So 4 times 5 plus x, and then 16 times x plus 2. Okay? Right? When you write a number next to the parentheses like that, doesn't that mean multiplication? Right? And 16 parentheses x plus 2, that means 16 is being multiplied with the x plus 2 there. Okay? So then, how do you multiply 4 with 5 plus x, Debbie? You distribute, right, the distributive property. Very good there, okay? 4 multiplied to the 5 and to the x. So don't leave that out. You get 20 plus 4x here. 
okay? And then same thing with a 16. It distributes to both terms. So it becomes 16x plus 32. Okay? So that's what we're shooting for here. That is what we're shooting for. All right? Something like that, once you distribute and all. All right? And so adjacent at this point, how do we continue solving? What do we do? Okay, so you want to you get the 20 and the 32 together? Yeah. All right, let's take care of our x's first. That's not wrong, but let's take care of our x's first. Yeah, I like to get rid of the smaller of the two, and 4x is smaller than 16, so we'll subtract 4x from each side. So we're left with 20 here. 16 minus 4, 16x minus 4x is 12x plus 32. And then what there, Jason, now? So what... There you go. I was going to say it is plus 32. We want to subtract 32 from both sides. So we're left with negative 12 equals 12x. And the last step? Divide both sides by? 12. Okay, so x equals negative 1. Okay? And so we solve for x, and that's all we were asked to do. But remember, negative 1 here, it would actually be 16 over four, and this would be four over one here when you plug those, those, uh, the x's back in there. But all we had to do was solve for x, so we, we, we're done. You want me to so say that again, what I just talked about right there? So let me show you. So again, we are done at this point, right? We solve for x, so we don't need to do any more work, but let me just show you kind of why this is our answer. If I plug this negative one back in for x up here, I get four over negative one plus two, right? And then if I plug the x back in for this one, I get 16 over 5 plus negative 1. Okay. What's negative 1 plus 2, though? 1. Okay, so it's 4 over 1. And then 16 over 5, what's 5 plus negative 1? 4, so it's 16 over 4. But 4 over 1 is 4. 16 divided by 4 is 4 as well. And so you can see that it does check. It works. So negative 1, this x value, makes this proportion true. Okay. <coughs> All right, one more here, and this is something that you maybe see as an application. So an Ohio-class submarine, All right. so submarines are, are, they have different, you know, classes for their size and, you know, what they carry, I guess, and, and all that stuff, what they're made for. And so the Ohio class, okay, is one of those classes. And it is 560 feet long in real life, okay? You, all right, buy a model, and I don't know if people still build models or not, but I used to when I was younger. And you're probably not surprised by that. All right, you buy a model that when built... Uh, is a one inch to 16 foot scale replica. Okay, so every one inch of the model is 16 feet on the actual submarine. Okay, this is something that's very important to people that build models, right? They want their, they want their model to resemble the actual ship. And so in order to make that happen, you have to scale it down because obviously to build a, a, the exact size uh, submarine as the real submarine, it would be too much, right? So you want to build a smaller version that you can like have and, and you know, look at and display or whatever. So one inch to 16 feet, scale replica, okay? So make two submarines and just make the first one a Right, just shrink it down, right? Using a shrink ray or something like that. Okay, so how long, how long will the model be? Okay, so quite often, if you ever, like, happen to pass by scale models, they have that little, they'll have, like, the, the ratio there. Okay. So, how long will the model be? Well, we know that the scale is 1 inch to 16 feet. So that's the one ratio that we're told here. And we want to set that equal to something else. Okay, so, Antoinette, you said x over 560. How do you know to put the x in the numerator and the 560 in the denominator? 
the same units. Yeah, so the units can help guide you there, right? So we're trying to find the length of the model, okay? And so the model will have to be, will probably be in inches because the actual submarine is, in is 560 feet. So we're going to match that 560 feet of the actual submarine to the 16 feet there for the ratio. And so we want to find x inches just like that. See if it's 1 over 16 equals x over 560. And so then what do we do to solve? Oh, yeah, Rob. Right, so we'll do an easy cross multiplication here. We get 16x equals 560, um, well, 560, and then divide both sides by 16. And so x becomes 35. And what would the units be for that? Yeah, inches, inches. If you see here, the x is it has to be in inches, so 35 inches. It's crazy. Okay. So 35 inches, 35 inches. Questions on any of that? I have one other thing I want to talk about here real quick then, okay? So we're also going to talk about, we're going to use these ratios and proportions to then talk about similar polygons. Okay, similar polygons. So here's kind of where some more of the geometry is going to come into play. So a polygon, by the way, poly is the Greek um, kind of prefix that just means many, okay? Polygon means just many sides, I think, or something like that. So poly means many, okay? So um, if two polygons okay, are similar, Okay, so our whole unit is going to be based off of this principle. Um, then, corresponding angles okay, are congruent and corresponding sides are proportional. Okay. This is almost our definition for congruent polygons. Okay. Congruent polygons, corresponding angles are congruent and corresponding sides are congruent. Right? When we talked about congruent triangles, when we talked about two triangles that are congruent, their angles were the same and their sides were the same. The difference here is that only the angles are the same Sides, though, corresponding sides are proportional. In fact, they're in the same proportion here. So let me kind of show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to draw... a shape. I'm going to try and draw a smaller version of that shape. Okay. And we'll call the big one polygon M-A-R-K and the little one polygon L-I-O-N. <coughs> okay. And the symbol for similar is similar to the symbol for congruence. Okay. So to say that these, if I'm going to say that these two polygons are similar, I'm going to name it M-A-R-K and I'm only going to put the squiggle Remember, remember for congruence, you have the squiggle with an equal sign. But for similarity, you're just going to show the squiggle. And that's it. So who's Mark? Who's Mark? Me. Me. So. Mark, squiggle, lion. That means those two things are similar. So since we're told that this polygon is similar to this polygon, that means, for example, that the corresponding angles are congruent. So for example here, angle M is going to be congruent to what other angle? Let's go to Alex. What do you say here? What's the corresponding angle to angle M? L. L. Very good. Okay. You can just see it in the picture, but it's also in the statement, right? M and L are in the same position. That's right. What about um, angle uh, A? What's that congruent to, uh, Alex? I. Angle I. I, I. All right. And angle R will be congruent to what? O. o. And angle K is congruent to 
angle N. Very good. Okay? So that's easy. That's just like with congruence, right? If two triangles are congruent, all their angles are going to be congruent. So same thing here, corresponding angles are congruent. But then for the sides, we're also told the corresponding sides are proportional. And so here's how we're going to write that. I'll start out with um, MA, and I'll put that over top of LI. Okay, so we'll make a ratio there. MA over LI, those two sides, must be in the same ratio as what other pair of sides here? Uh, Debbie, give me another pair of sides that must be in the same ratio. Okay, so say say again. R A. Wait a minute. R K over O N. Okay, yeah. So we can say that. Yep. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this in order. So we'll do I'll do A R over I O because that's the next kind of in order there. And then yeah, R K over O N. And then there's one more pair of sides there. What's give me the other pair of sides there, Debbie? Yep. M K over L N. Okay. So all these ratios will have to be the exact same. Okay, so MA and IL, that ratio, MA over IL, will be the same as AR over IO, will be the same as RK over ON, will be the same as MK over LN. If just one of those ratios is off, if just one of those ratios is off, are these two shapes similar? No. So they all must be in the same ratio in order for these two figures to be similar. And all the angles, corresponding angles, must be congruent in order to be in the same ratio. Okay, so that being said, let's ask the question here. So I'll ask the question, are these shapes similar? And, this be, and then we'll get into our books here and see some example problems from there. Okay, so are these shapes similar? So I'm going to draw two shapes. shape. By the way, does anyone know the name of this shape? It is a trapezoid. That's right. We'll talk about those in a later unit, so you don't have to know it right now. It's a trapezoid because it has at least one pair. Well, actually, shoot. I forget what the definition is now. It's either at least one pair or only one pair of parallel sides. Okay. question is, are these shapes similar? Oops, and I forgot to put in some... There you go. Forgot some angle markings in there. So again, the question is, are these shapes similar? Okay. So there are kind of two things you've got to look out for here, right? If you go back up to the top of the paper, we just wrote there, there are two things you want to keep your eye out for. Okay. What must be true about the angles? Angles, corresponding angles must be congruent. Do we have that here? Are corresponding angles congruent? Looks like it, right? Right angle here, right angle here. Right angle here, right angle here. Two arcs, two arcs, one arc, one arc. Okay? So it certainly looks like W and P are corresponding and congruent. W and or X and Q are corresponding and congruent. Y and R corresponding and congruent. Z and S corresponding and congruent. So is that enough then to say that these shapes are similar? Not quite. We should probably check those ratios just to make sure. Okay, we should check those ratios just to make sure. So let's see here. Let's go to Tom. Oh, Tom might be out here. We'll get to him. We'll come back in a second there. Jake, can you set up a ratio, please, for me, sir? Give me a ratio of sides that must kind of go together here. So, so 6 and 4. So XY over the 4, QR there. Okay. So 
So 6 over 4, and that has to equal the same thing as, give me another ratio. Yeah, please, Jake. Yeah. 12 over oh, sorry, I didn't hear you. 12 over 8. All right, what's another one? 9 and 6, and then the last one. Yeah, 15 and 10. Those are the last two, last two pairs there. And so now the question is, are all these ratios equal? Are they the same? How, oh, sorry, they're off the screen there. Sorry about that. All, are all these ratios equal? How can we determine this? Yes. Debbie, what do you say? Okay, so you're simplifying the fractions. That's one way to do it. Okay. We could also do Gabe's method of just straight up dividing those two numbers and seeing if the decimals are the same. Okay. So let's see. If we simplify this, this we can the six and the four. Six and four are both divisible by what? Two, and so we get three halves. Twelve and eight are both divisible by two, and that gives us um, six fourths. But then that six fourths, you know, become three halves. Nine six, they they can both divide by what? Three, so we get three halves. And fifteen and ten are both divisible by what? Five, so that's um, three halves. And so all of our ratios end up being three halves. So are these two shapes similar? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, <clears throat> are the shapes similar? Well, angles are congruent. So check, and uh, sides are proportional. Okay, check. And so I should say corresponding <coughs> angles and corresponding sides. Okay, so those two things are true, so therefore the answer is yes. Okay, <coughs> so there it is. Question on any of that? All right, let's crack open our books then, and we're going to take a look at what we've got in there. Uh, we're going to go to... Let's see what page this is going to be. We're going to go to page 601 in your books, please. 601. <coughs> Excuse me, 601. <coughs> In the new book, that is correct. Who didn't get one? Piper, I'm sorry. Mitch, you didn't get one either. Okay, I'm sorry. One moment. And a moment bitter. Yes, yes, I'll pass around the marker here if you guys do that. Six oh one. Yes. Oh, you going out? Okay. Oh, thank you, Debbie. <laughs> Someone asked about markers, by the way. I'm going to pass out markers. All right. Please write your name. Shh. Remember to please write your name on the bottom of your book, right? Kind of pinch together the bottom part of the book and then write your last name there. Okay, last name and first name if you want to, whatever, but, you know, write your name there. If you want to put it on the other side there and the other side there, that's fine too. Okay, but I'll pass these back. So you can write your name on your book there. Okay. But again, I suggest you write it on the bottom part of the book just like that so it's easy to identify. Okay. Put it away or something. So I'll give you that there. And the lake, you can have that. 
Okay, so again, we're on page 601. <clears throat> okay. So let's just look through this here real quick. We'll answer some questions. I'm going to get you guys started on your assignment. <clears throat> so again, talking about corresponding parts of similar figures. So if you know two figures are similar, what can you determine about measures of corresponding angles and lengths? Okay, so we're going to use the fact that two figures are similar to then come up with um, what we can determine and solve for there. Okay, so... <clears throat> So let's see here, we're going to um, consider the graph of ABCD, so you can see right there is ABCD, right there, okay, and we also want to consider KLMN, <clears throat> and we're first of all asking, are corresponding angles congruent, yes or no? Well, what do you all think? Does it look like it maybe that they are congruent? Yes. It does, okay, so let's see here, so for example, angle A, what does it look like the measure of angle A is right there? nine degrees, and it matches to angle K, which is also 90 degrees, okay? Uh, let's see here, what about angle, a angle N or angle D there? What about those two angles? Also, yeah, 90 degrees, okay, so that's good, they match up. Now, if we look at some of these other measures here, for example, angle C, ooh, that's a bit harder to tell, but let's pull out my protractor here and see if we can measure this angle. <coughs> so I'll extend... I'll extend a side here. Okay, and we measure this angle. Okay. Hmm. And it looks like it's about maybe 65. Oh, not 65, sorry. We're doing the big numbers here, right? This is an obtuse angle, so I need to go from here out and around. It looks like it's going to be about... Mm, 115 maybe there, okay? So we'll say for angle C and angle M, that's going to be about 115 degrees, okay? And then that leaves angle B and angle L, which hopefully is going to be like 65 degrees or so. So let's see here. Angle L, we'll measure that one here real quick. Well, I'll do it here. You don't have to do it. You can follow along with me, so... Like, will you have to measure with the protractor? Yeah. Uh, potentially, yeah. Are you afraid you're not going to be able to remember, me remember how to do that? 65. So, yeah, about 65 there. If you kind of continue it up, we'll say about 65. Okay. So, yeah, we should, still should definitely be able to measure with the protractor. So, it's yep, 65 degrees. Okay, gotcha. Okay. I'm going to borrow your ruler here, sir, if you don't mind. All right. Now, let's check the ratio. So, certainly it looks like corresponding angles, right, they are congruent. A and K, B and L, C and M, D and N are congruent. So they, that checks out. Let's check about corresponding side lengths. So let's see here. AB's length, okay, what is AB's length in this picture? Well, now be careful. Is it going from negative 1 to 4? Negative 1 to... Right. These, are, these blocks are counting by what? By how much? Yeah. 2. So this length here is 2, then 4, then 6, then one more. It's 7, actually, is the length of AB. Okay? We've got to be careful because sometimes they change up the scale on us here, so we have to be careful how we count. Let's also find KL's length. That one's easier to find. We can just do 2, 4, 6, 8... 10, 12, 14. Okay. All right, BC to LM. BC to LM. Well, those are diagonal distance, so I'm actually going to measure this using a ruler, so that way we can just kind of um, save ourselves some time here without having to calculate. So I get about 1.2 centimeters there for uh, BC. Okay, and LM is about, oops, that's inches. LM is about, wait a minute, did I measure BC right? I did not measure BC right, I'm sorry. 
BC is 1.5, not 1.2. I apologize there, folks. BC is 1.5, and LM is about... Uh, we'll say roughly 3 there. It's more like 2.9, but we'll say roughly 3. Okay, just so that it works out. Okay. All right, let's look at CD. CD we can actually count. What's the length of CD? 4. And MN is 2, 4, 6, 8. And finally, AD and KN. AD's length is 2, 4, 6. And then KN is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. AD was 6. Yes. Oh, you're done? Okay, did everyone get back there? Did you get back there too? Okay, so I'll come around and get that here in a second. I'll thank you. That's okay, thank you. I just didn't want it to be thrown at me, that's all. So. All right. Are these, yeah, does anyone else need a blue marker for their books? No? Okay. So, are these ratios all the same? Is this 7 14 the same as 1.5 over 3, the same as 4 over 8, the same as 6 over 12? Are they equal? Yes. yes. Thank you, sir. They all simplify to 1 half. They all simplify to 1 half. And so therefore, are the figures similar? Yes. Corresponding angles are congruent. And uh, corresponding sides are proportional. That's the key to determine whether two shapes are similar. That's your justification. Just like we were talking about, um, you know, congruence, and we either did a proof or we showed that the two um, shapes were related by a sequence of rigid transformations, okay, to kind of prove that, to prove that two shapes are similar, we, right now we have to show that corresponding angles are congruent and corresponding sides are um, proportional, okay, in other words, the ratios are equal. Ratios are equal, okay, and that's how you show it, okay. So it's, it's, Similarity is related to, it's like congruence, but not exactly the same thing. Okay. What type of transformation do we maybe see being shown here? A dilation, that's right. Okay. So now, now I told you guys before, we're going to be talking about dilations. Now we're going to be getting into dilations and things. Okay? All right, let me turn the page here, and we'll see here. All right, so... Uh, all right. Look at this next one here real quick. So if you look at these two shapes, okay, are these two shapes similar? I know we haven't gone through the work for it yet, but what do you think? Do they look similar? Yes. They kind of look, they're both rectangles, right? But let's check here. Are all the corresponding angles congruent? Do they all have right angles here? Yeah. So corresponding angles, yes, corresponding angles are congruent. I'm just going to put yes. All right, so let's explain. Yes, because um, all angles are 90 degrees. In this case, they're just all angles are 90 degrees, so they're all going to be congruent. Okay, Every angle there is 90 degrees. But now let's check the ratios. Okay, so again, we're counting by twos, if you notice here, because it, goes, it skips and goes to four, so that will be two and then four. Okay, so let's let's do A B. So A B's length is two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate, right? And E F is two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. All right, so you get eight over fourteen. Uh, B C is two, four, six, and F G is two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay. Now let's just pause here. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go any further. We don't need to go any further. I can tell you why. What does 8 over 14 simplify to be? 
not 2 over 7, 4 over 7, yeah. If you divide the top and bottom by 2, you get 4 7s. And what does 6 tenths simplify to be? 3 over 5. Now, again, you might look at these and say, Ugh, I'm not sure if these two fractions are equal. Well, let's take a look. 4 divided by 7 gives us this decimal. We kind of use Gabe's method here. All right. And 3 divided by 5 gives us 0. 0.6. Are these two fractions the same? No. Are these ratios equal? No. So the ratios of corresponding side lengths are not equal. So are the figures similar? No. Because because the ratios of corresponding sides are not equal. Okay, the ratios of corresponding sides are not equal. Right? The ratios of corresponding sides are not equal. We c I stopped right there. We could have co continued on. We could have continued on and found these ratios, but it doesn't matter. Once you find one or two ratios that are not the same of corresponding sides, then you know the shapes can't be similar. All right? This next example is so obvious, I don't even think we really need to, you know, spend very much time on it, but are these two shapes similar? Okay, what's that? Yeah, the answer is no. Why not? <laughs> Okay? An easy way to see this is if you just look at the angles, right? Corresponding angles are not congruent, right? There's no way that R is the same measure as Y. There's no way that Q is the same measure as X there. No. This is, these are not similar shapes, okay? Not similar shapes. Nothing's impossible? Well, if nothing's impossible, that means that the something, nothing's impossible. <laughs> nothing is at all, but nothing's impossible. So there's nothing something, I guess. That's the question. Anyway. So anyway, here's again the property of similar figures. If you know that two figures are similar, then their corresponding angles will be congruent, and then the ratio, so you can see AB over XY is the same thing as BC over YZ is the same thing as AC <laughs> over XZ. So it's similar to congruence, but it's not the same. Right? Right. Similar. It's the same. All right, one last thing here. Last thing I just want to look at, and we'll, um, we'll actually an error in the book here, but we'll continue on. So just, just how do we apply these properties? So here's how we're going to be applying these properties. If we take a look here on page 604, page 604, and you look right here at example uh, two, okay, you see this picture of these two shapes. The directions here, the directions here say, given the figures are similar, find the values of x and y. Okay? So let's do x first. If you look here, we can see here's x right here in this little expression, 4x plus 27 degrees. So it looks like that is describing what angle? Well, it's, it's describing angle C, but that will then match to, yes, angle R here. So we can say 4x plus 27 has to equal what? 95. And so you can look over here. They've got that for us right here. I'm not even going to bother to have this right now. 4x plus 27 equals 95. So they subtract 27 from both sides. You get 4x equals 68. Divide both sides by 4. You get x is 17. So there's the value of x, 17. Okay? If you plug that 17 in for x here, 4 times 17 plus 27, guess what? You're going to get the 95 degrees. Okay? Um, for the value of y, though, let's see where we see y. I see y here. Right, but I also see it here. Now these are sides, so we have to set up a ratio here. 4y in this shape, 4y in this shape, what does that match to in this shape over here? Okay, you guys see that? It's important. 4y here, Shh, folks, the giggling. Okay, 4y matches up with a 10. So you go 4y over 10, and then what else can we match it up to? What does 3y minus 5 match to? Josh, why don't you face forward? I'm sh I promise this class is geometry, not whatever you're looking at right there, okay? So you need to be paying attention to this stuff. And it's okay. I just want you to be looking where you're supposed to look, all right? 4y over 10. What's the 3y minus 5 match up to? The 5. So you can do 4y over 10 equals 3y minus 5 over 5. And there it is set up for us, okay, right there. Now, they do some weird stuff here. I'm not going to have it do that. If you just cross multiply, 5 times 4y gives us 20y. 
10 times 3y minus 5, be careful here, that 10 has to distribute to both these terms. So it's not just 30y, it's 30y minus 10 times 5, 50. Okay? Subtract the 20y over. Oops, why am I putting the equal sign there? Subtract 20y. Okay, we're left with 0 equals 10y minus 50. And then how will we keep solving here? What do we need to do to both sides? We need to get the 50 over, so we're going to add 50 to both sides. And so you get 10y equals 50, and then divide both sides by 10. I'm running out of space here, but y is 5 for your final answer there. Okay, y is 5. Uh, I kind of just, just kind of have a room. Uh, questions on any of that? All right, and then let me give you guys your assignment. So here we go on page six, starting on page 606. Okay, starting on page 606. You can start on this now. Squeaky markers. I want you to try um, numbers. Five, six, uh, fifteen, sixteen, uh, and uh, number twenty. Okay, yep. That's it. Okay. So go ahead and get started on that piece. 5, 6, 15, 16, and 20. 5, 6, 15, 16, and 20. Please. 